Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the different display screens from the Practical Logistics 2 mod as a sign uh, to label different things in different ways on your game. Uh, the amount of different signs that exist in Sky Factory and even Minecraft as a whole is very limited. Um, and these display screens can be used as a sign in some really interesting ways uh, to add a really cool effect to your game. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button, little bell notification. So that way you can see all our videos and tutorials as they come out. All right. So, so a couple different screens we're going to look at, and the first one we're going to look at is the display screen itself. You can see it's a bit more of a widescreen design, and to make that, you need a stone plate, sapphire dust, and a data cable. So how do you make those three things? Well, for, uh, a, display, for a stone plate, all you have to do is place any piece of stone inside of a forging hammer, which is something you can make very, very early in the game, and it presses out different items into different designs. Uh, the second one you need, the sapphire dust, is just putting a sapphire, which can be mined uh, either through the laser miner or in a couple of the different zones, uh, specifically Lost Cities. Uh, you can do that by putting it in the forging hammer, or you can put it in a crusher to get sapphire dust. The last component is a data cable, which is just combining those first two things, some stone plates and some sapphire dust, to get yourself the data cable. And that will provide you with a display screen. Now, the next one is the mini display. Now, this one won't go into a frame. It's the only one that won't. That's why it's kind of floating in the middle there. And to get that, all you have to have is a regular display screen. If you put that in a crafting table, it'll break it into two mini displays. Next is the large display screen. And for that, you're going to use another one of those stone plates sapphire dust, and one of the original display screens, the widescreen one we looked at first. Then there's going to be the holographic display. This one is going to be two of the stone plates, another one of the original display screens, and one of those data cables. As you can see, most of this is just building upon the previous parts you've already made. And then the last one is the advanced holographic display. This one's a little bit different. You need three of those little mini ones that won't fit in a frame. You need three sapphire dust, and then you need a signaling plate, etched plate, and wireless plate. And to get those, all of those are made in that same forging hammer from before. So the signaling plate is putting redstone in there. The middle one, the etched plate, is putting diamond in the forging hammer. And then the last one, which is the wireless plate, is just ender pearl inside the wireless plate. So a lot of this stuff you can make actually really early in the game. You don't need a lot of advanced stuff to do these, which is a really, really great feature. You can start using these pretty early. And another great thing about these, they don't require any type of power in order to work. Now, these screens will connect with the actual... Um, practical logistics components to create computers and things of that nature. And that's a lot more advanced than what we're looking at today. Today, we're just going to be showing you how to use the screens as a sign themselves. Uh, so there are some features we're not going to touch on. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves some screens. There's our display screen, our mini, our large, our holographic, our advanced, and then just some wood for crafting. So right off the bat, first thing I want to mention is that if you're putting down any of these screens, and you decide you want to set it on this wall here, you'll notice that it floats outside of it. It's not going to stick on this wall. And that's because the screens themselves are the outer edge of a block. Now, at the same time, if you want to break this or mine it, it's very difficult to do. The hitbox is very small, but if you go behind it, you can break it very easily. So from the back, it is much easier to break. So if I want this sign to be where this wooden block was, level, I'm going to have to remove that block and put the screen there. So it's going to be flush with that. I could put another block on in front of it if I wanted to. Hide that screen. But it's going to be flush at the outer edge of the block that you place it on. Now, one great side of that is if you want, you can also put another one on the back. They will form the two outer edges. You can't make a block all the way around. It'll only let you do it on opposite sides. But if I wanted to, I could have a sign on both sides of that block. And that's the same with um, all of the three original screens, the um, 
display screen, the mini screen, the large display, and the advanced holographic. The holographic display is a little different. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, another great thing about these screens is, again, the large display, if you play sit down, it's the same size as the block. So you don't have to look, worry about looking through it. It's going to do that. You can set on the other side, and that'll fill an entire block space so you don't have a hole. People can't see through it if you don't want. And also, if you want, break this here. You go right down in the middle. You can put one on the ground. So it's flush. You can walk straight over it, and you can have a sign on the ground. You can also put one above you as well, facing down. So if you want, you can put one on the ceiling. My downside with these are, again, it's very hard to break them from the front. So to break them again, you're going to have to go down and break them underneath. So be aware of that. Same as if they're on the ceiling. Breaking them from the back is the easiest way to do so. So now that we have the screen, how do we use it? Well, all of these screens have the same UI. So what I'm going to show you is going to work for all of them. There are several different settings here. The first one is going to be Create Info. You don't want to use that one unless you're actually combining it with the um, Practical Logistics system. It's not going to help you for a sign. The next one is Create Title, which is one of the options we'll look at. The second one is Create Wrap Text. We're going to be using that as well. The last one is Edit Elements. You're not going to use that unless, again, you're connecting these to an actual system. The last one is the close edit mode. We'll look at that as well. So first thing you want to do on your create title, we're going to start with that one. And these two things, title and wrap test, basically the same idea. You right click on that. It's going to give you this grid. So you get to decide how big your writing area on that sign is. If I want to be able to use the whole sign, I'm going to left click up here, right click down here. You'll see everything is green. And then I'm going to hold shift and right click on my mouse. Now it has click to edit text, or it didn't have that before. So now when I right click on it, I can go in here and I can edit the text. For example, put hello. And it's auto going to size it to fit in the area that I have given it. If I only had done this corner, it's going to write it in the corner. If I'd done just a small in the middle, it's going to fit it in there. But since I did the whole square, I highlighted green on all of it. It's going to center it to this block. And I can go back in and edit it as I like. You can change the color of your fonts down here. You can bold it, italic it, underline it. There's a couple different features here that you can use. Again, you can have it align left, align center, align right, font color. So you've got some different stuff to work with. Strike through. Um, obfuscate, funny little one. Uh, if you type some stuff on that, it'll make it look a little funky. Um, but overall, not too bad. So this is a cool little screen that you can use. And if I was to write a bunch of stuff, I can go like, hello, and then hit enter and hit every one. Now, I hit obfuscate, and that's why it's looking like that. Right? So that's the obfuscate thing I want to talk about, which is kind of cool. Turn that back off, though, and I'm going to go hello, hit enter, everyone. And as you can see, it's aligning differently. I, left, I have it left aligned right now, but if I'd center aligned it, it would have centered it. But it's going to go ahead and automatically center that in your screen based on whichever setting you're using. Uh, now, you are going to have to delete the original message, which is click here to edit, in order to start typing, or that'll stay there as well. So all of the different displays work that same way. So break this one, set it down, exact same process. I'm going to click on title, up click, bottom click, shift, right click on my mouse. Now I get in, I have the same situation, except a slightly different screen size. We do the same thing with the mini. And you see they're all flush on the outer edge of the square. Same thing, title, up, down, shift, right click. Me, I like using the whole thing, so I always highlight the whole screen. But if you wanted the message just in the upper right corner, you do have that option. So all of these have the same UI. They're all going to work the exact same way. Okay? So the second option, let me go ahead and just clear these out real quick. What we're going to talk about is going to be Let's use a large display, and that's going to be create wrapped text. Same exact process. Right click on that, upper corner, bottom corner, shift, right click on your mouse, and it's going to pull up here. Now, the text in this one's a little bit thicker automatically. Um, why? I don't know, <laughs> but it is. Um, I don't have it bolded. You can bold it to make it even more bold. Um, I prefer the font on the original one that I just showed you, which was title, but this is going to work the same way. So, click to edit text, you're just going to delete that. And now any messages I write are automatically going to wrap. So let's type out a little thing here. There you go. So 
Hello, everyone. How are you? So it's automatically going to wrap the text for me. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I can center it align. You have to have it highlighted, of course, but you can realign it how you'd like in any setting, whichever color font with the same sets, bold, italic, and so far. All right. So as you can see here, it says one of two, because I, the way I'd spaced it out with that, you have to hit the right button uh, to be able to go and see the next tab. Okay. Not super important. The last step we're, thing we're going to look at on here was the close edit mode. So again, if I was to say, go ahead and say, I want to create a title, left, right, shift, right click. And all I put in here is hello. Okay. So there's my message. Now, I don't want this little stuff up here in the corner, so I can click on close edit mode, which gets rid of that. So now I just have my pretty little sign here. But as you can see in the bottom left there, shift R click the display to reopen it. So if I shift right click again, it brings it back. I can go in and I can re-edit the thing, put different messages on there, so on and so forth. So again, now just right clicking on that takes it out. Shift right click brings it back. Okay. So another cool thing about these is you can combine them. If I put three large screens, this is now one big screen. If I do it this way, now I have an even bigger screen. I go up again, I say create title, upper corner, bottom corner, shift right click. And now I have a huge screen. And my text is going to take up the whole thing. And I get rid of that little thing by clicking it. And now I have a huge sign that says hello. So you can combine, especially the large screens, they combine very, very easily to make very large screens. I'm not seeing how big yet. Uh, I'd be interested to see, but you could probably make these pretty, pretty big, I would say. So that's just another fun use of them to make a larger sign if you want. Now, we are also going to look at the holographic display. Now, setting that down makes it look like this. Here's your holographic display. The process to use it is exactly the same. Now, this one, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set a block behind it, block in front. You'll see, again, it's still the front of a block, so same as the other signs. But this one's about mid-block of it there. So if you, this is a solid object, even though it looks kind of see-through, you will step over it if you're going to try to, you have to walk over it. You can see I would have to jump to get over there. So you can't use this as some type of pathway. You could walk through it. You will hit this thing. It is still a solid object. The process to use it is the exact same thing, right? Create info we're not going to use, but you can create title. Create wrap text. We don't use edit elements. Close edits, how you get rid of it. Then there's edit wrap. Edit holographic display scaling. And look at that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead here and we're going to get our title set, same way as before. Top corner, oops, bottom corner, shift, right click. So now I can go in here and I can write again my message of choice and I'm just going to write hello. So now I have a little screen that's glowing off of that. Okay, so now it's just kind of floating there. I can go ahead and click on edit holographic and I can change how see through, you see the different colors there? You can change using colors what color your background is. If you remove them all, it gets rid of it, and now it's just a floating word. Now, it is just one way. If you go to the back, you can't see anything. And oddly enough, if someone was standing on the other side of this, they wouldn't be able to see me through the screen. Even though it's showing me the, the background, the world through, I would be hidden. Uh, for example, here's good. If you look at the blue chest over there, as I block it with the screen, it disappears. So... It's just one of those odd kind of things that works. But you can go in here and you can change the colors to any you'd like. Um, so let's just say 20, 20, and we'll do 20. And that's the color I want. Back out. It would go ahead and you can change that. So that sign works really cool. Um, it's, it's a fun little sign to use and a great way of displaying things. Now, the advanced holographic display, much like the other ones that we looked at before, it's the front of a block and a solid block but it's also see-through. So I can have it see-through if I wanted to, but it is still a solid object. As you see, if I wanted to walk through that, I can't. I'm hitting it here right now. I can't move through it. I can stand in the rest of the block, but I can't move through that. So you can use this as some type of a hidden passageway or something of that nature. We've tried that. But the process to use it is exactly the same. Left, oops, bottom right. Shift right click. Now I'm going to make my text or I can delete the... I can change the uh, display again as well to make it see through. So there's a lot of different options and fun way to mess with these signs. But as you can see, they offer a lot of different options and ways to uh, 
create signs or or use them to uh, you know label things and such and again you can do them above you beneath you sides a lot of different fun ways to do these um, i recommend giving them a shot uh, especially just the standard large screens i like these the most because i like how well they work and i can make really big combinations of them all right so that's really how you use these signs as or these screens as a sign um, I recommend giving them a shot. They're really, really attractive. Uh, they look better than a lot of just the regular basic signs. And you can make them really early in the game. You know, the sapphire dust is probably the hardest. And once you have a little bit of sapphire, you can start putting these things together. Um, and uh, it's, it's a nice block to use. It gives you better options than the standard signs that you're going to find in the game. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to put those down in the comments, and I will do my very best to get back with you as quickly as I can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com, and there you'll find links uh, to all my tutorials and videos. And on the bottom of the homepage is a place you can submit questions, feedback, or suggestions via email. I check those as well. You'll also find my streaming schedule, uh, links to all my social media accounts. Uh, you'll also find, again, like all the tutorials and videos, as well as the ODG store. You can find some cool Only Draven Gaming merchandise. If that's something you might be interested in, I recommend checking it out. But overall, the website has a lot of great resources, so I recommend checking out the website when you have a chance. But that is going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.